<laughs> oh, spoken like a true 31 year old. Oh, so I mature. thought you were going to say true martial artist. No. Which is what I'm going to be. Yeah. In about two hours. BJJ, that's our topic of the day. Yeah. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Who? <laughs> You little sneaky fucker. What? You always have these cool jokes planned oh, to try to seem funnier than me. The fact that you call that cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just shows where oh, your humor is at. I thought it was cool. Yeah, listen, Jesus. Listen, at least we make each other laugh. Yeah. Yeah. You excited to walk into a room full of geese? Later on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for a crisp, clean D when I get oh, in. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's going to be hard to wrap our, wrap our heads around that one. We will be wrapping our heads around people, though, today. Yeah. Off to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Complete beginners. Yeah. Never done anything like this now. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're like, obviously, we've tried Mai Tai. Yeah. I've done boxing in the past. Yeah. But this is like a not a striking sport at all. No. This is just a, like, you know, when you see in MMA. Yeah. And people are just rolling around on the ground, hugging. That's what this is. That's what this but is. But is that not kind of wrestling? No. I don't know. Maybe maybe part of that is wrestling. I just, I was watching some BJJ videos, which I feel really stupid saying. I was as well. <laughs> I was as well. And now my whole YouTube algorithm was just showing me fucking Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, good or bad, or YouTube, all of these. They think you're a fighter, like. They honestly do. Mm. Yeah. And maybe I will be. Yeah. I think you're actually going to like this. I don't. Why? I don't know. I'm just not arsed. <laughs> to be <laughs> honest, I'm just like, just some effort. What, what do you mean? Like? I don't know. Like, I think um, kind of mounting a stranger is going to be weird. Oh, well, like when you say it like that, <laughs> it's going to be weird. Like. Yeah. No, I'll, f- I'll find the mounting of the strangers unusual yeah fair let's just say it wouldn't be my usual kind of Wednesday morning activity mm. and also like I don't like people that close into my space mm. and like there's just no personal space in this which I don't yeah. really like and like I sweat a lot here because yeah. it's roasting yeah, but so does everyone so does everyone I know but like what if someone's sweat drips into my mouth okay yeah do you know something like that mm, yeah so because you're wearing your gym gear and your big massive gi yeah you're wearing a huge draping gi yeah and I saw the the room that we're going to is in Bali MMA so we're still in Bali this is our last podcast we're recording in Bali oh yeah last day in Bali how are you feeling yeah. about that yeah fucking sad like yeah yeah oh it's good to be in there Mm. Oh, I've got to see my brother mm. nah just it's why did I go nah as if like nah I'm so fucking cool I don't care yeah you like, never say that I never say that no but no I'm sad to leave but you know what I won't be sad about what? is to leave the sickness yeah fucking hell we've been hell. just consistently sick for three months as is everybody yeah and that I will not miss as you can probably hear in my voice again I always sound sick every week. I think your voice always sounds husky. Like Do I, kinda, I, sound I like think this? you kind of have excuses there recently. You're like, yeah, th- that's that's why I sound <laughs> like this. But, <laughs> yeah, but you hear even that little wheeze. Yeah, I did. That's actually, not yeah. normal. Like. Ooh, stay away. Yeah, so that I won't miss. Are you happy to leave? Ah, like I wouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird way to <laughs> ask. Weird the way, yeah. you, you must be delighted to be leaving. Are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um, I. It's not that I'm happy to leave i'm excited to see somewhere else yeah definitely yeah but like we've made a lot of friends here we have yeah well anyway, anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> our last day in bali we're going to do some bjj bjj and just to clarify for anyone who doesn't know bjj is brazilian jiu-jitsu obviously yeah. you would have seen that in the title a gi is like the like you ever seen if you see what people wear in karate that kind of like yeah, white yeah. coat. Oh shit, we coat, should have said jacket. that at the beginning yeah, before we made like a few jokes. A few jokes about geese. Yeah, that, that's geese. what it is. And in Ireland, a gee also means like your box. That probably means even no, less to like, people. That's like you can't replace it means uh, your, your special area. Your vagina. It means vagina. Your vagina. Yeah. But yeah, I... I, I, I'm not that excited. I I felt clueless about breathwork and I feel more clueless about this somehow. Do you? What? Do you mean? Like... Yeah, I don't know. It's just really out of my comfort zone. All right. I think you're just like, try boxed before I'll be class at no, this. No, I don't think that at all because I think this is grappling and I've never grappled anyone. No. You know, like I, I, 
I don't know what way it's going to go because every time I see MMA, I think right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be good at this because you're on the ground. It's kind of like it's like play fighting when you're younger. You know, yeah. you're mess fighting one of the lads, and you're like <laughs> well, trying no. to get someone in a headlock. You remember you used to do that with your sister Jess, <laughs> <laughs> me and Jess. No, I don't think we'd be and, uh, <laughs> trying to get each other in a chokehold. Arm bars, yeah. No, um, I, I think it, I think it's going to be very different. Now, yeah. people are fucking mad for jujitsu. Mad for it. Absolutely mad for it. So that's actually where I started. I googled why does everyone love Brazilian <laughs> Jiu Jitsu? Because I don't really understand. You know, where that is sounds kind of cheeky. Like, why the fuck does everyone but love? Yeah, this? I think I was trying to give a bit of cheek to Google and give me back a couple of things. <laughs> uh, the first, like, I found an article. Why do people love Jiu Jitsu so much? So at least right. it was specific. Skilledfighter dot com. It's apparently one of the world's most popular and fastest growing martial arts. It's like mm. we're only doing things that are really fast growing, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? But yeah, some guy, Rice Gracie, introduced jiu-jitsu to the world yeah. when he first won the UFC in 1993. Right. Mm. It's only going that long. But I think it's going ages. But it just became kind of mainstream then. But I think, it, yeah, it became a lot more mm. popular when, when he won that. Obviously, there's health benefits. Don't tell me you have one of those articles where it's like, 10 reasons you no, should try. No, I couldn't do it again. Yeah. Because there was... You absolutely loads of them all the same shit and i couldn't i yeah. couldn't do it again so there's been research that shows that it builds excellent upper body and core strength and people who do this generally have lower body fat oh right okay so, wasn't probably because that. you're losing so much sweat as well yeah and people are just pinching you all the time oh a little pinch there was also a study on soldiers who have ptsd okay uh, which this was kind of a weird one thrown in, but it talked about jujitsu reducing depression, anxiety, and alcohol use. Oh, random yeah, one! Random, and I kind of thought, right, surely all exercise will help reduce depression, yeah. anxiety, and alcohol use. Yeah. But they said they have also done the same study with just exercise, and the results were promising, but not definitive. <gasps> oh my god, that's impressive! Yeah. So the the reason BJJ was so good over like five months they studied is because you're repeatedly practicing problem solving. I have that written down as well. You came problem across that as well. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of you're in all of these kind of complex moves. Mm. You're trying to get out of them. And also for particularly for veterans, it was around resolving difficult, uncomfortable struggles. Ah. Which can promote relearning in how to be effective in adverse circumstances. So it's kind of like when you have PTSD, you you're in this big kind of struggle. Yeah. And this just helps you to to figure ways out of that struggle yourself so it gives you kind of more control oh my um, god that's unreal into it yeah so that's that's incredible like mm, isn't it yeah, because really good, yeah. i i saw that as well like i know there's so many times that we research something and it says like not just physical health but mental health yeah. but this seems to be on a different level it does, as you yeah. said like because it's an hour where people are trying to choke you or like break your arm or something yeah and it seems to not matter if you're like the biggest and the yeah. strongest. It seems to be more of a mental game mm. that like you need to solve the problems like you're saying to just move in a certain way, use a certain techniques to kind of get yourself out of there. So yeah, it seems to be a kind of thing that you literally cannot think of anything else mm. while you're in that. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're you're in this position of you could be choked to death, but you're never going to be, you know, choked to death or whatever. Yeah, so you're, but you could be. But you could be. Yeah. yeah. So it feels like that would be a possibility. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. The, that the article was talking about the same thing. Some Japanese jujitsu master i want to say yeah. brought it to brazil i think and there was two guys who weren't naturally athletic and they adopted brazilian jiu-jitsu and would have been pretty small and they could just take down much bigger opponents like that's unreal that's isn't fast, it yeah i was reading a thing that like brazilian jiu-jitsu can be one of the most frustrating martial arts because it takes a really long time to get good at it yeah and you're always always learning and that's why people get so sucked in because mm. you're never just going to be really good straight away there's always stuff to learn the belt system there's a lot of different steps throughout yeah, it you know it takes fucking ages to become like a black belt yeah so people get really hooked in it in that way because it's a seriously long game mm. I, w I was thinking about it it's like imagine we did this today and we got really into it and then like we were those people walking around with like cauliflower ears <laughs> does that happen in that yeah. probably does happen in this it yeah. does yeah imagine oh, us shit. looking like that sexy sexy, sexy. cauliflower ears are so fucking weird 
No, I look at them being like, they could kill me. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, but it does. It kind of looks like it's something weird that you're born with. Do you know? Yeah, I think it looks cool. <laughs> All right. I know. I, I genuinely do. No, That's because you're such a cauliflower fan. <laughs> I am. I just fucking love cauliflower. I don't want them. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I now imagine if you got really into it and you started to get them, and you're like, "Well, the only way to not get them is to stop." To stop. Yeah. I think it's genetic, though. Some people get them and some people don't. Really? Or some people get them much easier than others. Mm. I think it's kind of genetic. How does it happen? Is it just from like blood to your ears, or what? Just from friction. Is it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't a very convincing. Mm, yeah, yeah you like, think so? Uh, yeah. But yeah, can I go through some of my research? You or do you, you, you want to just permission. keep talking? <laughs> So what, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Um, yeah, well, you went through a lot of what I had. But as you were saying, loads of famous people yeah. do it. Loads of influencers do it. Okay. A lot of influencers in Bali especially go to Bali MMA. Yeah, well, when you say influencers, are you talking about like actual people in MMA? No, no, no. Like influencers on Instagram. Oh. Like Sean O'Hagan and James Smith and like Oh, they've all gone to this Bali yeah, one. Okay. They've gone to Bali MMA. Um sure. and UFC like professional fighters and stuff go there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So know it's that like much. a very well renowned gym, which yeah, is cool. Definitely. And yeah. they do all different types of martial arts, but we're just focusing on jiu jitsu. And I think it's gonna cost us like as well as gi rental. It's gonna gi cost rental. us like fifteen euro each, I think. Yeah. Which is not too bad. It's not too bad. Like if you're going the whole time that's expensive. Yeah, but if you're going the whole time, it would be cheaper per session. Like. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is really <laughs> interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I just think some people want to know the cost, you know, because we're, we're trying to be no, like... No, I know. I know they do, yeah. Oh, so 15 euro. That. Yeah, don't. <laughs> 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 I'm just cutting you off there. I know. But whenever you were lo- researching, did you see that uh, Tom Hardy won a competition at the weekend? What do you mean? He won a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competition on Saturday. Wasn't he in, what was it, The Fighter? Was that? Do you remember when he was... Uh, he was in one of those, The Fighter, like the, the Wrestler, one of those kind of things. I don't yeah. think it was The Wrestler. No, it wasn't The Wrestler. That's Jeff Bridges, isn't it? Who cares? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm acting like I'm really busy, like I need to get this yeah, over and done. Yeah, you are, like, don't. Yeah. But yeah, Tom Hardy is a big Jiu-Jitsu head. All right. Yeah, so maybe we'll see him. It'd be so weird if you were, you know, that's just your hobby. And then you're going to your fight at the weekend and you're fighting Tom Hardy. Imagine. That'd be kind of class, like. Yeah. Some people just have it all, though. Like, he's a fucking big actor and he wins his competitions in jiu-jitsu. Yeah, fucker. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's like... Go on. <laughs> we can say he's a hot piece of No, ass. I was going to say, and he seems like a oh, crack. That's not what you're going to say. Mm, that is you're going to say he's a finer, say. aren't you? He's a finer. But... One of the things with jiu-jitsu is, out of all the martial arts, it has the lowest rate or possibility of concussion. Oh. Because there's no striking. Oh, yeah. So, obviously, I looked at, is it dangerous? Yeah, okay. And it was saying, no, it's got a really low rate. There's no striking. There's no elbows. There's no kicks. No things like that. Yeah. So, the chances of getting injured are very low in, in that way. But then, if you let your ego take over and don't tap out quickly enough, you could end up with a broken arm. Or yeah. broken fingers or being choked out. Yeah. Which is all fucking terrifying. I came across a Reddit, because I was looking through Reddit for a jiu-jitsu. Most disgusting jiu-jitsu stories. And there was loads Ew. of stories about arms S- being snapped. Ah! Legs being snapped, all that stuff. What and the fuck? Yeah, and people just, they, can, they can't get the sound of that snap out of their head ah. kind of thing or like a crunch and can, stuff. I, can I just say something though I did see a note being like don't tap on the floor Why? because people mightn't hear it tap on the other person Oh, do three taps on the other person because if you tap on the ground they mightn't hear that if there's a lot of other noise in the gym I think yeah definitely for the first session we're going to be fine, like. I know, but like. We'll just... probably be tapping as soon as someone touches us. <laughs> yeah, be like, ah. Go away, go away, go away, walking go away. in the door, just like tapping on someone. <laughs> I don't like this. Uh, yeah, so discussing, discussing stories. There's also a lot of, um, a lot of people like kind of shirt or fart during it. Really? Yeah, so some, somebody was like, he was squeezing an RNC, must be some move, on some guy who had his chin down and was going so hard, I sharted, which made him laugh and allowed me to get under his neck. <laughs> I was like, right, so you actually used sharting as a tactic okay. there. Okay. Some other person. Then his gi is full of poo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> some other guy said we were doing no gi butterfly guard passing. Don't know what that no. is. And the coach who was demonstrating had his balls fall out of his shorts. I think a real GAA thing as well, isn't it? <sighs> People's balls falling out of their shorts. <laughs> like onto the ground or Not what? Onto like, the ground. I mean, like, you know, they're how attached. How big are like... the balls? Like, <laughs> the way you say, like, just falling out of his shorts. Yeah, but you know the way, like. While he was doing the move. Yeah. I Not think... just standing around, like, and his balls like, just went, like, Meh. Just dangled Blip. out. And then another guy, he said, on my second day, I had someone's sweat drip directly into my eye. Oh. Still. Still rotten, like Still your rotten. eyes would be stinging. So yeah, there's a couple of rotten stories. There were some worse ones as well, but that's disgusting. That. While I was still on Reddit, mm. I found funny jujitsu story. Ooh. Well, oh, let's hear this. So a man said the other day I was teaching a class and I mentioned one of the key principles of my jujitsu is to maximize leverage, and I talked about using the femur bone in your leg as a lever. Okay. One of my students got triggered because they thought I said fema. Which I don't know what FEMA is. I feel like that might be important for the story. It is. He said, I said, lol, I'm talking about the thigh bone, not the prison camps. And the only oh. comment underneath it was, you have a black belt in shit posts. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Loved that. So yeah, that was that was all I could really find in Reddit. Then there were some people who were just mad into jujitsu mm. and I'm talking about it. But, but we keep saying jujitsu and that's actually a thing on its own. It's yeah. not as popular as Brazilian jiu-jitsu, though. I don't think so. That's the but big one. Jiu-jitsu is the OG. That's like... The OG. That was the first one. Well, I watched a video about what to know about your f- before you do your first class. Okay. So, number one, don't smell. Oh. So that's a big thing. So the, the guy was like, be clean and especially have fresh breath. Right. Because you're so close to people's faces in some situations. Okay, yeah. So he's like, okay... We're going to have to actually brush our teeth today. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Then I was like, oh my God, should I have chewing gum? Should I have mints? And I was Wait, like, I I've, might I've choke. i got some mints in my bag. We can bring the okay, mints. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, that made me nervous then because I was like, okay, I can do all the brushing of my teeth and have all the mints that I want. But the other person oh, might be okay. fucking smelly right in our faces. So yeah. kind of dreading that. Okay. The next thing then was keep your finger and toenails short because you can easily scratch the other person or you can get a broken nail oh, if you're a no. woman. And like my nails are fairly long, but it's gel. So I can't just cut them myself like mm. or they look shit. So I'm just going to have to be like, don't break my fucking nails, bitch. Whoa. To whoever man or woman I wasn't being sexist there. You are. The next thing then was you got to realize people are going to be sweating on you. And it's like, oh, that's really a common theme with this. There's going to be sweat dripping on you. Sick. Yeah, that's like, not nice. Like, why sign up to something to get sweat dripped into your mouth? But when we were doing Mai Tai and stuff, that was pretty sweaty as well. I know we weren't sparring That was anyone. outrageously sweaty, but we weren't leaning over someone. Yeah. If we were leaning over people, our sweat would have been going in their faces. Yeah. And that's what's going to happen while we're mountain strangers. <laughs> yeah. You need to stop saying that. Honestly. Like... It's very intimate, isn't it, really? like. Well, let me talk to you about the psychology of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu oh. from psychologytoday.com. Uh-huh. So they were, they were actually saying that that intimacy is, well, intimacy is maybe the wrong word, but that's, that's actually a good thing. So Yeah, no, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's an unusual thing. It is, yeah. I think it's an Irish Catholic thing that I'm just a bit like, oh, being that close with strangers. What would Jesus think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave a bit of room for Jesus. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> Do they? I've never heard of them That's what they used to say like at dances back in the day between a boy and a girl. It was like, leave room for Jesus in the middle. <laughs> never heard that. We should get you a t-shirt to now. <laughs> Leave a bit of room for Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, it, it apparently creates psychological changes, BJJ, um, who become addicted. Why? Mm. One of the things that distinguishes it is your face-to-face, body-to-body. Many people today are starved of physical contact. Oh, right. Okay. Mm. That's that's actually good, yeah. So he's saying like, it's a sad fact that many people go through each day experiencing just a few handshakes as their only experiences of touch. Oh. Cuddle parties. Jesus. And professional cuddlers are tapping into this hunger. That's definitely an, uh, an article or an episode. We could do a cuddle oh my party God. episode. I don't like sound of that at all. I don't either. But it would be funny. (laughs) Such contact triggers the neurochemicals, the release of neurochemicals in your brain. So you're talking about things like oxytocin. Mm. And that's apparently the cuddle hormone. And that's 
likely one reason why friendships develop so quickly and deeply Aww. among people. And see, see, you're all about it now. Yeah, now I wish I didn't take the piss out of it. Yeah, well, you also <laughs> say about, um, obviously you're in constant struggle. Like you're in this yeah. context of struggle and, and survival and stuff. So adrenaline, cortisol, they're all like, you know, flooding your, your bloodstream and stuff. And that also enhances your focus and awareness. Oh, right. So as a result, like you were saying, that you're constantly focusing. So you're not really thinking about worries and all of that sort of stuff as well. So it's really good for, yeah, you know, anxiety and, and things like that as well. You're in a fairly deep meditative state in that way like yeah you're exactly. not think- you're only thinking about the present yeah yeah exactly all you can think of yeah because you're you're trying to survive like yeah um it increases oh. your levels of testosterone so you might you might grow a little mustache maybe nice and i have one already yeah you do, you do. <laughs> i might get a full beard yeah you might <laughs> uh beard gee so um <laughs> now what i wasn't expecting david j lay phd BJJ Black Belt, he's oh. the author, right, of this. So he's a clinical psychologist oh. that, and he focuses on healthy sexuality. Right. So he's got a couple of books. The most recent one, Insatiable Wives, Women Who Stray and the Men Who Love Them. It's a book about swinging. He has <laughs> The Myth of Sexual, uh, The Myth of Sex Addiction. Uh, I really like this next title. Ethical Porn for Dicks, <laughs> A Man's Guide to Responsible Viewing Pleasure. And right. the final one, Butt cheeks, not what they're cracked up to be. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I made the last one up. Oh my god! But I thought it might be his I next book. I was just gonna say, how would you get a whole book out of butt cheeks? Yeah, well, I, I kind of like the butt cheeks, not what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> yeah, that's know. very good. Maybe I'll suggest it to him. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, I, I thought that was a good article, so I think we should share that one because uh, yeah, it's a not psychologist just, uh, who's a black belt. Like I, be- I really believe him. Yeah, exactly. He sounds credible. I was wondering, whenever we walk in, do we have to bow? Isn't that kind of a martial art thing? I don't know. Like, when you initially said that, I thought, this is along the same lines of you thinking that we need to mop the floor of the gym when we're finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were saying. Oh my God, time. it so is actually. Yeah, but no, but now that you say it, when I was reading, I think on the Reddit thread, there was, I think people do bow to a picture of the guy who created, who created it. it, maybe. Oh, maybe. I think they do. I'm not sure. Like, we'll obviously have to watch everyone just to check if people are bowing and then we'll bow. Well, yeah, it's like in, it's like when you're, you know, in mass or... Genoflecting. We'll Gen- genoflect we'll when we're walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do at home. I don't know why that seems so funny. That really tickled you, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. We'll genoflect. Mm. Class. Yeah, I was I was hoping you could answer this question for me okay. as someone who who very lightly researched BJJ. Right. Why do some people wear a gi and some people don't? Is it just that some people like gis and some don't like no, gis? No, I, I think there's I think it's a case that it's like there's a gi class where everyone has to wear the gi, and there's a no <laughs> gi class where nobody has a gi. Right. No gis no allowed. No gis allowed. Yeah, yeah. So boys only club. Oh. Uh, yeah. There's I don't I don't really know what the no gi is about. I think it's harder because. Like Ed, our housemate, was explaining to us that if you have the gi, you can use the gi as a way of. <laughs> I know, like, you can grab the gi. You can grab the gi and, and use kind it of as a way of leverage yourself yeah. from the gi. Yeah. I think someday we'll grow up and this won't be funny. <laughs> you know, like, but for now, it's gas. Today is not, Today that, is day. not that day. No, so, um, I can't wait to hear the teacher being like, okay, everybody, hands on the gi. Yeah. And I can't wait to see you, Jennifer, like, laughing to yourself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> listen you gotta make your own fun you do yeah <laughs> um yeah so i i think it's just a case that we we'll just go in and copy what other people are doing yeah what but was the, the question again oh, fuck <laughs> hell the, the, the question was <laughs> do why do something i think i think everyone's gonna be wearing a gi oh sorry the gi yeah we yeah, moved on to because there, there's a class before this one that we're going to with no gi. no gi no gi yeah yeah so there's a gi class no gi class gi class <laughs> right and then i okay. think there's just lunch or something <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> nice. Mm. Let's play our game. <gasps> oh my God, I fucking forgot about the game. Yeah, I'm so very excited for the game. I had an idea. You were supposed to make the game this week, but I just had an idea. Yeah. So I, I took the reins. It was going to be called Jujitsu. <laughs> oh. So a bit of like a guess who kind of game where and you're like, do they have glasses? Do they have hair? Whatever. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu? Jiu-Jitsu. Love yeah. that. But I, I decided for something different. Okay. 
I wanted to make it really different because I think we've been doing a lot of quizzes and shit like that. Mm. So I ended up on who hit Sue? <laughs> what? <laughs> who hit Sue? Right. So it's who it's a riddle Sue? based game. I'm going to mention a, a scenario which is kind of like a riddle, and you need to figure out who hit Sue. All right. What the fuck? I know it's a different one. Are right. you, is this a game we can play with everyone at the end of the class? Uh, I don't know. They'll probably <laughs> give us some funny looks. Like so. Here's the first one. All right. Sue was driving down the road in her yellow Mini Cooper. <gasps> I know. She's the woman of class. Huh? She came to a T junction okay. where two cars were approaching: a red Jeep from the right and a blue limo from the left. But silly Sue huh? was turning huh? left when it wasn't her right away. <gasps> so who hit Sue? The right the car coming from the right. Which is which one? The red Jeep. Correct. <gasps> Nice, you got who hits who? Hits who? What okay. a fucking stupid game. It's such a dumb game. <laughs> and like, I, I thought it took me a while to oh, make these things up, right? That is so funny, like. So, next one. <laughs> so there was uh, four disciples sitting in a line in this order. Okay. Outside, outside a bar. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke and Sue, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, oh my God. They're all just chilling. They're having some like bread and wine. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a disagreement between Mark and Luke, right? Oh, Mark fuck. called Luke a massive Judas. No. So then Luke smacked Mark in the face. So again, they're okay. sitting in the order, Matthew, Mark, Luke and Sue. So Mark calls Luke Judas. Luke hits Mark in the yeah. face. Then Matthew swings for Luke and misses while Luke is swinging for Mark again, who also misses. So who hits Sue? Matthew. Oh, I never wrote down the answers. So. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to figure it out. Yeah, I think it is Matthew. <laughs> Correct, Matthew hits Sue. Oh my god. <laughs> nice. Really nice. God. Oh, very good, very good. Oh, did you make that riddle up? I made all these up, yeah. Fuck say. All right, so... Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke and Sue. Matthew, Mark, Luke and Sue, right. <laughs> That's so good. So, um, this is a maths question, right? Sue oh. was playing piggy in the middle with two of her mates, Little John and Big Dave. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sue was the piggy. <laughs> what is a Little John and Big Dave? Little John and Big Dave, right? Oh, Big Dave is what I want to name a really small dog. A really small dog, yeah, definitely. So Sue was the piggy, right? Oh, okay. Now, Little John, who started throwing, he threw it back and forth to Big Dave <laughs> for quite some time. Okay. But after successfully evading the piggy for nine throws, yeah. it eventually hit Sue in the head on the tenth throw. Oh. So who hit Sue? Uh, Lil John. Oh, incorrect. It's oh, shit. Big Dave. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's just because it's an uneven number that it would have stared another person. Right, 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 right. Okay. So you've got two correct out, okay. of, uh, out of five, a potential five. Okay. You ready for the next one? I'm fucking ready. So Sue's standing in a line, just Go queuing. On, Sue. Mind Sue's her own goddamn business. Yeah. Right. Then there was three people behind her. Okay. There was Paddy Green shirt, Paddy Blue shirt, <laughs> and Paddy Pink shirt, right? Okay. Green, blue, and pink. Yeah, in that order. Okay. So they all start complaining, right? And Sue is just fucking sick of their shit, right? Yeah. So completely out of character, you know Sue. Uh, she gives Paddy Green shirt directly behind her add an elbow to the ribs. <gasps> oh, and out of character. Sue. That is not the Sue we know. No. Paddy Blue shirt, who's directly behind him, says he deserves it. So Paddy Green shirt turns around like hits him absolutely clocks him yeah. he falls over <gasps> and Paddy Blue Shirt knocks over Paddy Pink, Pink shirt. shirt when they both get up reforming the line in the same order Paddy Pink Shirt shoves Paddy Blue Shirt <gasps> until everyone falls over including Sue uh, but to end up on the ground who hit Sue? Paddy Green Shirt oh, correct you're actually really good at this or I maybe can't, they're simple riddles I can't cope when I was listening to that I was like like yes, yeah, so you sat down and wrote this <laughs> yeah, out yeah. like a fucking child. I know, yeah. Petty pink shirt clocked him. Petty blue shirt fell <laughs> <Yeah>. over. <laughs> Sue's really been through in a car crash. Oh. Punch in the face, hit by a ball and piggy in the middle. And now in the line in Dunn's getting knocked over. Yeah, but she was one of the disciples, so yeah. not to forget that. This last one is a bit of a rhyme and riddle, right? Right, okay. There was the carpenter Drew, then there was the feeble Hugh, and the <laughs> other weird fella that they called Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> All absolutely dying to batter Sue. 
<laughs> but who knew? <laughs> I can't say this until you're ready. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't breathe. <laughs> right. Fuck's sake. Turns Go on, out, start again, start again. There's, I didn't a, there's even a lot of words in. that Ray went through. So, okay. There was the Carpenter Drew, then there was a Feeble Hugh, <laughs> and the other weird fella that they called Winnie, Winnie the, the Pooh, Pooh, all absolutely dying to, to batter, batter Sue. Sue. <laughs> but who knew that the one to hit Sue would never dwell in the zoo, nor know his way around a drill or a screw? What? Let me say it again. So, oh, I have to guess what you mean. Who hit Sue? Who hits who? Winnie the Pooh. No. Correct. Shall we say it one more time? Yeah. There was the Carpenter Drew. Yeah. Then there was the Feeble Hugh. What's a Feeble Hugh? Ah, oh, just Hugh. It's just a feeble lad. Oh, right. Okay. And the other weird fella that they called Winnie, Winnie the, the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. All absolutely dying to batter Sue. Oh, sorry. Hugh. Hugh's the one. So he didn't know his way around like Carpenter would. Yeah. He wouldn't be in a zoo like Winnie the Pooh would. Correct. Yes! Very good. So I cannot cope with you making this shit up. Yeah, so thanks for playing Who Hit Sue. Oh my god, well done, baby. Woo! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> actually good at riddles. Yeah. I don't like know where they're good riddle. riddles, though. I don't mm, know. I let the sure. listeners decide. Let the, you let us know. You let us know. Yeah. At Should I Butter Pad on Instagram? Should I Butter Pad on Instagram? That's right. gas. I thought for the game we were just going to grapple. <laughs> just, just let everyone listen to a struggle. I was just grunting. Like, yeah, get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> oh my mm. god. I was going to say, geez, that was an aggressive game, like a lot of hitting. But then I remembered we're doing fucking literally a fighting sport. Yeah, we're doing jujitsu. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, let's go. Let's get our geese on. Yeah. And fucking sweat into other people's mouths. Yo. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. <laughs> okay, class. Right, let's go. And we're sweaty and we're back. We're back in the room. <laughs> we haven't even showered yet. No. We're covered in the sweat of 10 other men. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah the gi is heavy heavy as fuck yeah really heavy and there is no air con in that room either no no air con a, an enclosed room like literally four walls a roof a door everything cl- enclosed mm, yeah which you imagine is how it always is yeah like at least you had shorts on yeah. I didn't think to wear shorts as wearing full black leggings oh yeah, yeah, yeah and like yeah. a sports bra and a top and the gi mm. well let's talk about the gi first the gi the gi makes you feel fucking invincible the it second does. you put it on. The gi makes you feel Holy like you're shit, I want to get one. Karate kid. Like you feel class. And you had a lovely blue one. Mm. Andy, that was there with us, our friend. We went with Andy and Ed. Andy and Ed. Our yeah. two pals. And Andy gave you a loan of his gi. His yeah. blue gi. <laughs> Still can't take it seriously. <laughs> I know, yeah. But that was lovely on you. Thank you. It was it was really good. So yeah, we went to uh, Bali MMA, which yeah. we we'll put up on Instagram. Yeah. That's like a prominent MMA, jujitsu, wrestling, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that was really good as well because I think I think the best thing we did was going with two people that we know. Yes, because we got to do a lot of moves with them, practice a lot of moves with them. It is kind of weird getting close to strangers. That's my first impression. Yeah, do you know, like having to actually roll around the ground with strangers, but with two people that you know who already know a little yeah. bit about what they're doing, that was nice. That was so much nicer than the the moments that it, that we practice with strangers. With strangers, yeah. It was it was way more comfortable having one of the lads, yeah, like really close. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because so, they're they're kind of talking you through, and you don't really care what happens. You exactly. Don't, you don't really care yeah. like if you do things wrong yeah. or if you're getting tapped out by one of them or whatever. Well, but, the thing is, as well as like they knew. That we were just complete, complete beginners. Yeah. So I was like, right, neither of them are going to like try fucking break my arm here. Yeah. I don't uh, think. But to be fair, I don't, I don't think anyone would. One thing that we only realized at the end of the class that they were saying was there was more black belts and brown belts than normal. So the way it goes yeah. is white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt. Yeah. And I think there was three or four black belts. Fucking hell. In there and two brown belts. So like, <sighs> I think Ed was saying he's done it in Mayo. And Andy does it in Manchester. And they generally only have like a black belt 
one black belt that comes in like once a week or something yeah. like Andy was saying. So yeah. it's like the quality is not not as high as here. So I'm kind of glad. That's probably the case in most places. I think this seems to be like an insanely high level. Well, that was it. Yeah, wasn't it? So Ed was saying to us as well that there was two lads there from, is it K1 or 1FC or something like that, where know. it's like the Asian version of UFC. UFC. So there was two or three people that are actual competitors in that. Yeah. And one lad who was in the UFC. Yeah. So that was fucking mad. But what's insane is we would have never known. Yeah, no, we wouldn't like, have known that. Like, they were so normal, humble, yeah. just, like, there's no kind of showing off. Obviously, there can't be, because I think then people would want to kick the shit out of you more. Mm. But, like, when we were walking in, like, it took me a while to even notice the belts that were different colours. Like, <laughs> I literally was just, I was just like, yeah, like, they gave me a belt, whatever. So you, you were like, fixated on the gee, that was it. I was fixated on the gee itself, yeah. No, I just, I didn't even notice. And then after a while, I was like, holy fuck. His belt is black. That makes him a black belt. I was like, that's <laughs> insane. And then I was like, brown, purple, blue. And I was like, what's mine? Mine's white, yeah. Like looking around, <laughs> being like, like that took me a while. Yeah. And then when people started kind of fighting mm. and I was watching them, I was like, all oh, right. Yeah. They're black belts. You saw- like when you saw black belts fighting each other. Sorry, go on. It's also like, it doesn't really feel like fighting or something like, yeah it doesn't to me fighting is like two people hitting each other mm. but the fact that you're not allowed to throw punches like it doesn't feel violent it doesn't feel violent you're in so many all. positions yeah where you feel like you know you just want to punch the person in the face you know when you're standing <laughs> over them or something you're kind of like that's the natural thing to do but yeah. i don't know how, how did it compare to what you were expecting oh my god it was different it was different yeah like i was kind of expecting We'll go in and be rolling around or whatever. But it was way more respectful. Mm. Like it felt very calm and like people had a lot of respect for each other and everyone was really down to earth and really humble and really friendly and like helping you out and everything. And I was like, everyone's just so fucking nice here. Like, Like I wasn't expecting that level and it just felt calm even though everyone was fighting. What were, were you expecting people to be more aggressive? Yeah. I thought it was going to be more aggressive and more like kind of shapers and stuff like that. Mm. And it was, there was none of that. Yeah. Like maybe that happens in other classes, but today there was none. Did you, What was your impression? I didn't really know what to expect. Like when we went in and we, so we did the warm ups and you're kind of. I couldn't do the warm ups. Warm-ups, the warm-ups off. So you're tumbling, doing forward tumbles, you're doing backward tumbles. I thought you were going to break your neck. You were tumbling on your neck <laughs> everyone else was kind of going over their shoulder and you were just I was like oh my god every time you flipped over I was like thank god and then you'd go again and I was like Jesus yeah, no, Gary there's, there's a few times I just it, when do you roll over backwards like that Honestly. never never ever happens and it was just kind of like go and also I don't know like are they are they moves that you use the ever tumble in it I don't like probably to get away maybe yeah but like do you, my natural reaction to get away is stand up and run the opposite direction. You yeah, know? Like, I know, like, but then they probably take the legs. Yeah, I don't know. Do I, a I cool tumble. Like, yeah. I don't know. But the warm up was, was kind of weird. Um, <laughs> I, well, I've just never had a warm up like that. Yeah. But then you're straight into it. Yeah. So then the the head coach and his other coach, like not his assistant. Just a brown, a brown belt. A brown belt. So a black shit, belt yeah. and a brown belt. Walk into a bar. Walk, <laughs> <laughs> Walk into a dojo. <laughs> um, so they kind of start showing you a move. Yeah. And like straight away, I was a bit, I was a bit taken aback being like, okay, like there's a lot of like touching of each other's legs and stuff. And I was like, is that going to feel weird? Nah. The minute you get into it, it's just like, you're just grabbing whatever you can, wherever you can. Yeah. And it doesn't feel weird in the moment. So you know that kind of way. Interesting that you say that because before you were kind of like, I don't really want strangers in my space. No, and stuff I, like that. I didn't really give a shit, especially yeah. when it was Andy or Ed. I mm. really didn't give a shit. And then when it was like a stranger, it's kind of like no one cares. Yeah. So then I was like, I don't care either then. Okay. So, so that wasn't really in my head too much. Yeah. Once I got there, the fear of sweat dripping into my face. Also instantly forgot about that. Yeah, okay. Instantly yeah, yeah, yeah. forgot about it. Like literally, he, they were they were showing us the move and then they were like, right, go, practice. Yeah. So I was obviously doing it in the most basic way possible, mm. but I instantly felt like a fucking tank. <laughs> I felt so class. I yeah. was just like, 
look at me here now mm. and I'm able to submit this big lad. I obviously wasn't like because they were like they weren't fighting back or anything. Yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah. but still, I was like, I feel so good about myself now. Yeah. So that just continued throughout the class. OK, so the two biggest worries, like if anyone was considering doing this and they had the same worries, I don't want to be sweated. I don't um, want some of the sweat into my face. I don't yeah. want to sweat into someone else's face. I don't want to be getting that close. All of that just goes out the window. It goes out the window literally within 10 seconds. I think like we were saying before as well, that Psychology Today article, and it was like, there's just adrenaline and, and cortisol going through your blood. Yeah. And you kind of just forget to worry about anything. You're just yeah. going to fix it on. That's so true. How do I get out of this position? Oh my God, yeah. There's mm. nothing, nothing exists outside those four walls while you're in there. Yeah. Then whenever you're wrestling with someone, when it was this kind of, so we did all the moves and whatever. And then it was just right. Like, okay, go. Everyone practice. Yeah. I've no idea what to do. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. Like. Uh, and I think you knew even a little bit more than me because maybe you would have been like play fighting. But yeah. like, like when we were going, it was kind of like, just, just go as if try and do something. But yeah. I was like, I, I literally have no idea. I've never done this in my life. Like, it's like, I have no idea how to even play fight mm. or how to try and fight like yeah, yeah without like trying to hit someone well that was the thing you know there was a few times when i was standing over and you'll probably see this in the reel or whatever that we put up that i was standing over a guy and my instant reaction is just punch in the face <laughs> or knee in the balls or you know do something to yeah. affect this person take a cheap shot take basically. a cheap shot yeah my, <laughs> my instant reaction was just take a cheap shot yeah but like i i just didn't know what to do it's like i don't know how to do a arm lock or arm yeah. bar or whatever any of these kind of things are so it's a weird feeling feeling absolutely helpless i know you yeah. know not yeah, not yeah. being able to wrestle a grown man or whatever the other thing i was thinking as well because i was it's not called sparring it's called rolling i rolling, think, which I think yeah. it's kind of funny i was rolling with this uh <laughs> that actually sounds like i'm trying to be two gangsters yeah, like it does. rolling with um, this guy rolling, who was rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> yeah. is that a gangster song? Nah, maybe that's some biscuit or something. Yeah, he was a little bit probably heavier than me, or maybe shorter in the same weight. I don't know, but he really knew how to throw his weight around. Yeah, and I was thinking if I was sparring a girl, because that was the thing that we were talking about before. That like it doesn't matter about size or mm -hmm. whatever, gender, age, blah blah blah. It's more about technique. But I think there's a lot of like, if you know how to throw your weight around, it can kind of pin someone down. You can use the weight to your advantage, yeah. kind of. So I'd be interested to to know. I didn't spar anyone or roll with anyone that was smaller than me. So I, mean, I did. Okay. So I was rolling again. Just sounds weird. Yeah. I was rolling with a girl who was like probably twenty kgs lighter than me. Right. Like much, much smaller than me, and I couldn't do anything. Oh really? Yeah. Like she was just so strong and like with little movements yeah. of her hands or legs, whatever, little tiny movements, she just had me pinned instantly. Like, mm. so I was like, okay, I would consider myself quite strong. Yeah. I don't know. You consider yourself quite fast as well. Like. I, yeah, I'm definitely not fast. Fast <laughs> is definitely <laughs> not. But I think I'm kind of strong. Right. But like, no, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. So I was just like, if you got to the point that you're both really good mm. and if you were in a competition or something, you wouldn't be in the same weight class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. So I think if you got to that level, you wouldn't really be rolling. <laughs> Look so at stupid. it. Like, why are we trying to talk as if we know? Yeah, we really, we on. really haven't a clue. And we I think really that was know. that was a general message. But so I was watching you rolling with like a blue belt who was really good. Your face looks like you were about to die. <laughs> And I wanted to, like, something made me was like, oh my God, should I tell him to stop? Because <laughs> I was like, I feel like the male ego would take over and you wouldn't tap, even mm. if you were in pain. But your face, you were like, ah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's like, oh my God, Gary. It's not even, and this is what I was going to say next. It's not even, because they, they, I got into arm bars and all these kind of things. that, And it, they never went hard. You know, right. it, it was never a point that I was in pain. But... It was just such a struggle. And I think that was that's the difference between someone who doesn't know what they're doing versus someone who does. Because yeah. I was sweating like fuck. My face was really red because I was just more tense and kind of trying to struggle and shimmy my way out to things. Whereas they were constantly in control. He looked so calm. Yeah. That's he was the thing. barely moving. Someone who knows what they're doing. And your legs were flailing. Yeah. I was I was literally, <laughs> I was just trying to, you know, move my knees around, yeah. get around his head. I couldn't. I was helpless. Yeah. It's probably, it's a little bit annoying, maybe frustrating, but it's also, 
that's where you're like, holy shit, there's a lot to this. Mm. Like, there's really a lot to this. Yeah. Yeah. But Tiny movements can change everything. everything. Like, yeah. yeah. But I must say, it's actually a bit of a mind fuck how much you need to concentrate with your brain. Yeah. And is. I was just like, I don't have enough of a concept of where my leg is behind me or where I've put that arm. Yeah. Like, I wasn't in my body enough. I was kind of too in my head. Mm. So that kind of way. So yeah. I was just like, couldn't really get the concept of what way to move my limbs. So a few cauliflower ears. Yeah. So a few cauliflower ears. I think they're really cool. Do I don't you? want them myself, but like, I think they're deadly. Why? I don't know. I just think they look cool. I think it's what it represents. Okay. Represent. Represent. I don't know. I, I really want, I really wanted to have that conversation with the trainer, you know, the black belt to be like, oh, cauliflower ears, are you kind of happy you have them? Like, but I didn't have the conversation, obviously, because... <laughs> you didn't ask him. Didn't ask him. He didn't him. want to call his ears rotten when no, he's got those didn't ears. didn't want him to fucking choke me out, <laughs> leave me in a hospital, but... Isn't it weird that we were just in a room with several people that could easily have killed us? Yeah, they probably could have choked you to death. That's what I mean. Broke like, your arm. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Or severely injured us. Like, yeah. the majority of people there could have severely injured us. Mm, even the people that didn't... I was rolling with uh, another lad who was like a white belt yeah. and doing it for a couple of months just couldn't couldn't get my way around that fella yeah. at all I just didn't know what to do no but idea like, that's a weird situation to be in like, it is yeah it makes you kind of vulnerable that's probably why it's so exciting yeah and like the the trainer and other people who were chatting to afterwards they were all saying it takes about well one lad said it takes a year so I don't know about that but that was the fella from the UFC oh was it for yeah Oh shit, okay. He was like, give it a year. I was like, a year? Yeah, a year? You're fucking serious? <laughs> but yeah, most people said, what, five to ten sessions or something yeah. until you start to really know. Just to know what's bit, going know on. what's going on. You yeah. wouldn't know your shit like, but you'd have an idea of what to do. Mm. Like, I'd say it takes so long mm. to really just have a full on spar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll, whatever it's called. And like when we were doing the Mai Tai episode, so that was like our second episode, mm. we were talking about it being a good platform for MMA, best strike in sport, all that sort of stuff. And we mentioned Brazilian jiu-jitsu in that episode. Yeah. Which did you prefer, Mai Tai or this? I way preferred this. Me too. I preferred this so much more. Yeah, me too. That I'm just like, do I have enough time in my life to get a black belt? Yeah. Like literally that's what I was thinking. I, I think was it like, takes right, I'm 31 now. How many years? 10 years, I think. Yeah, but like that's that's how my brain was going after that. I loved it so much. Holy shit. I fucking loved it. Mai Tai, I really liked as well, but I just found it so hard. Yeah. This I found hard, but in a completely different way. Yeah. But I was buzzing off this. Like I felt so excited. Yeah, same. Like I obviously wasn't doing that much, but I was just like, how cool is this? Yeah. Like it just felt like amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I felt the exact same. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I thought this was better than Mai Tai. I think it's also... It's kind of like when you're in the gym and you're doing weights and you feel kind of strong and happy, you know, but it's it's kind of like you're putting yourself under tension and then you have a break, tension yeah. and a break. Whereas you could be in the gym doing loads of cardio and you're absolutely bollocks, yeah. but you're happy maybe half an hour later. Yeah. I think Mai Tai is like cardio, whereas this is That's more like weights, that you're kind yeah. of like, you're really satisfied with yourself. You feel even improvement by doing it a little bit longer you mm. know even though it's our first session but your muscles are really tense you know yeah. I, I felt it was you're constantly trying to press against someone or push someone off or, or get out of some way with a grip or whatever it's yeah it's really really different it's so different to anything i've ever done yeah oh stop mm. completely different yeah but yeah i was so i enjoyed it so much more and like we loved my tie at the really time like, at and the i time, would yeah. do my tie again yeah but like this was a completely different experience. Mm. It's it's hard to believe that someone in MMA can do both at a high level because yeah. they just are so fucking different. Yeah, I suppose that's why MMA is so like popular. Like, yeah. you know that it's just a mix of all these fucking really hard things to do. Yeah, it's mad. But i I think the I think the the main thing I loved was just just everyone's attitude. Yeah. Like, no matter what color belt they were, whether it was the coach, whether you're a beginner, like everyone just felt kind of equal yeah. in a way. 
there's also there's a bit of ritual to it as well you know like the, yeah. definitely at the end where you shake your hands ha- with everyone kind of you put your hands beside your I was watching everyone doing this I wasn't yeah. doing this put your hands beside you quick bow and then shake a hand move on to the next one it was kind of like at the end of a rugby match where you go like good game good game good, good game. game yeah but or even or even at the start of a rugby match where you know the whole team shakes the other team's hand and you're everyone's kind of going around to make sure everyone yes. shakes everyone's hand yeah did really enjoy that I that loved was that like, as well yeah a lot I of respect like, how fucking class are we lads yeah it was nice yeah and, I loved that so yeah there was a lot of respect in it a very a lot of like is it humility is that the right yeah, word yeah yeah very humble people. very very humble so yeah loved that absolutely loved it yeah. yeah i wish we started going here earlier same so that we could go back to bali mma because there was just a really fucking nice feeling there i think really the, nice vibe i don't know what it's like in other mma gyms like mm. do do they offer a mai tai class on a jiu-jitsu class i presume they do Probably. but like mma yeah there was also something kind of nice about, you know, walking into a class and knowing that there's some people there training in striking sports, some people in yeah. there training and like grappling and wrestling. Just and stuff a good buzz in there in general. Yeah. And it just yeah. felt a bit like, <laughs> oh, I, I could do jujitsu jujitsu today and then might say tomorrow. Yeah. And we literally loved it so much. We both bought T-shirts. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> I <love laughs> Went that. to jujitsu and got the T-shirt. <laughs> we literally got the T-shirt. Yeah. So yeah. it was, um, it was really, really good. I Because obviously we were going to Wanderlust, which is a... A CrossFit, CrossFit gym, and I still love CrossFit. It's a different mm. type of of training and stuff. But I really wish we went to Bali MMA more. Yeah, same. It I was really, really fucking class. That. Should I bother beans? How many? Oh, I I'd give it a four. Okay, where yeah. did I lose the bean? Yeah, no, I don't want to give it a. I don't want to give it a five because. I wasn't like mind blown to the point of breath work. Okay. Now I was. I was. I was mind blown. Like I fucking loved it. Yeah. But it's it's still at a four. Okay. Because there was a big part of me that just didn't really know what was going on. Okay, fair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like fair. It's, I'd say you'd want to have some determination and patience as a beginner mm. to get anywhere with it. Yeah, Like yeah. I could see it being the type of thing that you go and you're not a beginner anymore, but you're also not good and yeah. it being frustrating. Okay, yeah. So that's where I kind of put it down that I'm just like, oh, I think as a beginner it would just be harder. But today alone... I I probably no I wouldn't give it a five no, no stick, four stick, stick with your four, stick four, with your four. four yeah yeah no and four is fucking That's good. feels really high yeah yeah like absolutely loved it mm. you how many should I bother beans <laughs> <laughs> love that love that rating I would give it I'd probably give it a four and a half. That's that's really yeah, good for you. Yeah, I wasn't. I like. I I kind of. I thought I'd be a bit like. Yeah, look, it's good, but it's not as good as some other things we've tried and whatever you know. But it's. I suppose like boxing was the only sport I did growing up and Mai Tai you know, we, we tried that and I liked it and stuff like yeah. that so I was used to it's just a different type of fighting that yeah. I've never done before and I would actually say the frustration is what gave it the extra half point for me oh right because I just think it's like oh class like you really that'll keep you pushing it's on. really a challenge yeah. yeah it's really like I just I have really felt out of my depth but not in danger you know mm. it was like i felt like i have no idea what to do here but everyone else does yeah so i felt a bit like fuck there's so much i could learn here there's so much i could kind of do i'd love to be at this level yeah i did like kind of fighting back even though it was a struggle yeah but it was a good challenge that i knew no one like it's, it's different going into sparring and boxing or my tie because you could be getting in with someone that's going to break your nose or yeah, that's going to literally severely damage you you know yeah. like in this it, it just didn't feel like that you know so not in the same way. I must say, you looked like you were in your element. Yeah, I was really enjoying it. Yeah, like you looked, you looked very determined, mm. and you looked great in the blue gi. <laughs> you, you're taking this like it's some sort of fashion competition. Honestly, like. it looked good. Probably it was weird for me to say in the class, but like, doesn't he look lovely in the blue gi, lads? Yeah, yeah. But I meant it. Yeah, it was. It was definitely. It was. It was really, really good. So I yeah. am. Yeah, wish we went wish we went earlier. I would 100% be doing that again. Same. 100% I think as, do it as again. Well, you know, when we're back home, because obviously we're traveling around a bit and stuff mm. like that, so it's hard to have like a routine or whatever. But if there is a jujitsu place close to where we end up living, I would definitely, definitely join it. Yeah. And I, I think, could really see you doing it long term. Yeah, I would love to do it again. Yeah. I would really, really love to do it again. And I think for anyone listening, like if you get a chance to try like a beginner's class or something, do just it. see what it's like because... yeah. It was we were saying about the the hormones that are released and mm. uh, all that sort of stuff, the oxytocin. Yeah, like, I was really thinking about that, being like, "This is great crack." Yeah, I, I was buzzing. Like, mm. 
absolutely really, really was on life. Yeah. I really enjoyed life. it. I think if it was just something like a striking sport, it's probably just more adrenaline and cortisol than, yeah. than you know, oxytocin. It's, or it's just like taking a fucking hard punch to the face for a split second. It's not the same as like <laughs> constantly rolling around with someone. Like, yeah, you know? so yeah. it, was, um, it was class. It 100% was really should bother. 100%. 100% will do it again. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And if you haven't listened to the Mai Tai episode, listen to that as well because that was a good one yeah that was a good one yeah like, was, i think we were obviously that was very early on so we we're maybe like a bit more <laughs> more shy then but, a bit more shy yeah but, yeah less uh, shy talk maybe maybe that's what you're into maybe yeah maybe <laughs> if we want something a bit more serious but yeah just to see how they compare but um yeah 100 percent to be going to if you've a choice between either i'd say try jiu-jitsu I'd say first jiu-jitsu, yeah. yeah definitely yeah. Nice. Well done, Gazi. I'm proud of us this week. That's the end of episode 20. I think we pushed ourselves outside our comfort zone. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the end of episode 21. Episode 21. (gasps) Milestone. Into the 20s. Early 20s. Early 20s. So yeah, next week we're going to be looking for something to do in Vietnam. Yeah. We've got a couple of options. A couple of options. A couple of good ones. A couple of good ones. There's a... We're not really sure yet. It depends on where we land first and what we do. It does, yeah. But we have we have some options. Have some ideas. We might be going to a shooting range. That are all fun. Yeah. Yeah. We could be doing Vietnamese cup and therapy. Oh, that's yeah. the first time I heard of that. I know, yeah. I was looking yeah. that up the other day. There's ear cleaning. I don't know if I'll do that. Oh, but God. There's a couple of things that we could be doing. So, um, again, if you haven't yet sent in a suggestion, <gasps> we did an episode on yeah. suggestions from our audience. Yeah. We'll probably revisit something like that when we get through all those ideas because we got quite a few. But if there's anything that you're thinking, I've always been curious about that or mm. I haven't seen you do an episode of this or have you thought of whatever, write to us on Instagram do. or you can email us. So We're Instagram very open. is should I bother pod? Uh, should I bother pod? Yeah, that's should it. I bother pod? I, I like, like, got a minute. No, no, sir. So, yeah. Or should I bother pod at gmail.com. So you yeah. can reach us either of those two ways and um, let us know whatever yeah. you think. Yeah, any suggestions? Good, bad, indifferent, ridiculous, redonkulous, redonkulous. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's it for Thank another you. week. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks for being here all the way to episode twenty-one. Yeah, what a buzz! Um, yeah, I will see you next week. Bye bye.